Hey everybody, in this unit we're going to talk about physics and energy. Now first of all in this unit we're going to talk first about kinematics. So kinematics is really the study of motion. So that's why lesson number one, we're going to talk about motion. Now motion is the movement of objects and always must follow the laws of physics. Now what are the two main types of what we call quantities? Now you're going, what do you mean by quantities? Well when we explain a number, we actually explain a number in two different ways. And they're called what we call scalar and vector. Now what is a scalar quantity? A scalar quantity is one that just has a value, it has a magnitude, but no direction. That means it doesn't matter where you have a direction. An example of this would be if he said you walked 40 kilometers. Because if you walk 40 kilometers, you're going to be, where did I walk 40 kilometers to? You could walk in a circle for 40 straight kilometers. And that's what we call scalar quantity. Compare that to what we call a vector quantity. Vector quantities have magnitude, but it also has direction. So an example of this one would be, you walked 40 kilometers east. Now what that means is you walked in the direction east for 40 kilometers. You didn't walk in a circle. You didn't walk 20 kilometers east and then walk 20 kilometers west. No. You walked 40 kilometers east. Now to show this with a symbol, the symbol of a scalar quantity is going to be, in this case, for example, if you're talking about speed, Speed is not S, it's actually V. Because speed is a scalar quantity, it has no direction. But if we're talking about a vector quantity, what is that called? That is called velocity. And velocity is also the letter V. But to show a vector quantity, you want to put an arrow. Why do we put an arrow? Because the arrow shows direction. So now what we're going to talk about is the difference between distance and displacement. Because these are actually two different things. Distance, which we represent by the letter D, is a scalar because it actually doesn't matter the direction. It just tells you how far you traveled. Oh, I ran for 40 kilometers today. That's a distance. Displacement, on the other hand, which is going to be D with an arrow on top of it, that is a vector. Because in this case, it describes position. Now I'll explain to you what that means, describes position. What it means here is that if, let's say for example, you ran 40 kilometers, okay? So with distance, you would just read 40 kilometers. But for displacement, if you ran 20 kilometers east and 20 kilometers west, it's as if, you, in physics sense, you're now back to where you started. You have no displacement. You actually look like you never ran at all even though you probably did run 40 kilometers to someone who maybe have just saw you right there and then they went, what do you mean? You're at home. So that's the difference between distance and displacement. Displacement talks about positioning. Now if I want to go in a bit further, the units of both of these is still the meter. So let's look at this example here. So in this case, you're, this is your home, here's a store. When it takes you, what it takes you is you drive 10 kilometers east to the store. And then you drive 10 kilometers west back home. What is your distance? Well, on your car's odometer, which tracks the distance travel in the car, it would read 20 kilometers because of 10 plus 10. But displacement, which I'll write as DS, DISP, is actually zero kilometers. And that's because displacement only cares about 
your change in positioning. It depends only on the change in positioning. So we're going to explain this a bit further. First of all, I'm going to talk about time interval. Because most of you are familiar with what we mean by time interval. What's the difference in time? When you want to find a difference in time, how do you know how long something takes? Well, time interval is calculated as this equation. It's delta t is equal to the final time, which we'll call t final, minus t initial. As long as you know what your final time when you stop the stopwatch and the initial time when you start the stopwatch, you can find the change in time. Now, why is that important? Because displacement is just like that. It is just like calculating time interval. Because it's a change, not a change in time now, but a change in positioning. So displacement, thus, will be calculated like this. Delta D arrow is equal to final position. Take away initial position. If you know where you initially started, and you know where you, you are finally at the end, you will always find your displacement. So let's take a look at this next example of a skateboarder to explain a bit further. So here's a skateboarder. They're doing a, I believe this is called a, I don't actually know, I'm not sure what this move is called. Not really a skateboarder, but the skateboarder's doing a trick. Now, as they're riding along the sidewalk, here initially, this is the initial starting place. They haven't moved yet. After two seconds, they're at meter two meters. After five seconds, they're at seven meters. Let's give these positions a letter. This is position A, position B, and position C. So if I look at the time interval, the time interval, so if I were to somehow put this into a table, for example, so if I move this table a bit lower, and I'm talking about time interval, okay? From position A to position B, the time interval is going to be, well, the final time is two seconds, the initial time is zero seconds, so it's two take away zero, that's two seconds. From B to C, this time, it's five seconds, take away two seconds, and that's three seconds. Okay. If I'm talking about displacement, though, from A to B, the displacement's two meters, take away zero meter, because it's final position, take away initial position in this case, it's still two meters. But if we're talking about from B to C, from going from position B to position C, it's now seven take away two. Because the skateboarder is at seven meters and they initially were at two meters, this would mean that the change in displacement now is five meters. So that's the difference between displacement in this case and distance. Because the distance of the skateboarder here is actually seven meters because that's how much they change. They, they've had seven meters of, of distance traveled. But displacement always matters about that. Always matters about positioning because what if the skateboard went backwards, which we'll have to do an example of soon. So how does signs affect our vectors? Well, signs affect our vectors in we conventionally give Conventionally, I think that's, I got it, uh, conventionally give direction signs. Now what I mean by that is this. When you talk about upwards, when somebody's traveling upwards, what sign would you say it is? Up is positive, don't you? Because you give it positive values. Down, thus, is negative. Okay, that's one way you can talk about it. But what about left and right? Well, if you're talking about right, right, going in the right direction is positive. 
What about going left? Going left is thus negative. So we can give signs to our vectors in that same way. So if I explain it based on this person, if I were to describe this, I'm not going to write this down, I'm just going to describe this. But I'm going to give these letters first so we know what we're talking about. This is A, this is B, C, D, E, okay? If I'd set this person going from A to B, the displacement, it's going to be 20 meters, because at the final position they're at 20 meters, but initially they're at 5. In this case, it is 20, take away 5, that's 15 meters. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Let's talk about it now based on B to C. Well, their initial position was 20 meters, their final position was 10 meters. Now it's 10, take away 20. And now their displacement is a negative value because they, if you look at it, they went left. So that is why it's negative 10 meters. If you go from C to D, from C to D, final position is actually, now actually if you think about it, it's negative 10 meters, because it's on the left side, and their initial position is positive 10 meters. So you have negative 10, take away 10, and that's negative 20 meters. The last one is where you're going to talk about D to E. In this case, their position now is at 0 meters, their initial position is at negative 10 meters, thus it's it's um, 0, take away negative 10, and that's why their displacement is positive 10 meters. So that's how sine works based on the direction they're traveling. Now what we're going to talk about now is a different, not a different topic, but the now we're talking about uniform motion. What does it mean when something's uniform? It means they're all the same. So when we talk about uniform motion, it means it's constant motion. The motion is exactly the same. Now how could something have constant motion? If it has constant motion, it means there's no change in velocity. If you increase velocity or decrease velocity, you're going to change the way something moves. What that means is, if there's constant motion, there's no change in velocity, that means it's constant velocity. So if you look at example 4, if this billiard ball was taken by a camera that snapped the billiard ball moving across this table every second, and then inter uh, put all these pictures together, you're going to see that the billiard ball is rolling along. But the question is, the following photo is showing the position of the ball at equal intervals. How do you know the ball is moving in uniform motion? Well, how do you know? Well, if it has constant motion, that means no change in velocity. Now, what you're going to learn in the next lesson is that velocity is a change in displacement. So is there a constant change in displacement based on what you see there? You could say so, that the distance, the displacement between these two balls there, these two right there, and these two right there, and these two right there, and these two right there, are all the same. And if they are the same, then this means that this billiard ball is moving at uniform motion. So how do you graph uniform motion? Well, if you look at this example right here, this is a position versus time graph of, for example, a billiard ball, where after one uh, second, it's moved 20 centimeters to the right, 2 seconds, 40, and so forth. So what, how do you graph this? Well, first of all, we always got to know time is always your independent variable. <laughs> position is always your dependent variable, because position depends on the time it is. So what does uniform motion mean then? Uniform motion, if you look at this graph, means you have a linear line. It means you have a slope. And what that slope will give you is your velocity, which we'll learn in a future lesson. Now, if you don't know what linear line is, it just means it's a straight line. Now, looking at this graph, what else can you tell me? Well, what else you could tell me is that it has a what we call a positive slope. What does a positive slope mean? It means 
the object is moving in the positive direction. And what that means is either up, which you could call north, or right, which you can call east. So this is an example of something that's moving in uniform motion. Okay, then what does a zero slope mean? Zero slope, if you've taken math 10, is a line that has, that's basically a horizontal line. Now if you look at this graph here, you will see that a horizontal line means every second the position of the object doesn't change. If the position doesn't change, it means it's a stationary object. So it is not moving. And that's what a zero slope would mean. Lastly, what would the negative slope mean? A negative slope just means, if that means the line's going downwards, that just means the object is not slowing down or anything. No, the object is moving in the negative direction. And what does negative direction mean? It just means either down or left. And if you were to talk about this in a, a, a compass style, down is south, left is west. So this is an example of using uniform motion and slope to explain it. As always, make sure that you um, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.